morning everyone, welcome to Finnegan's Farm, uh, welcome to our YouTube channel. Uh, if you wanted to subscribe to the channel there, it won't cost you, just hit the, hit the button there. And if any comments of what we are going to do today, put them in the comments list there and we will get back to you whenever. Okay, today is, we're going to talk something slightly different in farm and practice. Uh, they play a very important part of what we do here on the farm in pollination and they are called the bees. Okay, so at the back of us here, we have the apiary here where the hives are. We have the local beekeeper, Pat Darby here. Pat uh, also works in the farm. He operates the, the pack house in there. So uh, Pat is going to give us a little rundown on what actually the bees do. So we will grow a lot of crops like aliseed rape and beans and potatoes. And it's very important that bees play that part because they will pollinate them plants and then that's what it's all about. So we're just going to hammer in the last nail here. We have our sign up. It says, pardon the weeds, we are feeding the bees. So you see here in the back, you see where, where, uh, where the apiary is. It's actually surrounded. We have 50 acres of a woodland here behind us in Ballarat Woods, which overlooks the farm here behind you. Uh, we also have a, have a row of board boxes, which are all along the trees there. So as part of our Origin Green program, um, it's, it's all about how we farm, and farming practice is very important to us. So the bees play a huge important role in that. So we're just going to explain to it. I'm going to hammer in this last one here now, so no pressure on the head. Of the Look at that, no pressure there. Anyway. So we've that here. Actually, Trixie has come to join us as well, haven't you, Trixie? Yeah, so that's how, how content the bees are here. We're in the corner of the field here, um, just surrounded by, by the tractors, the dogs, the people are here, and uh, there's no issues with the bees. So there's no, not a whatsoever, no. No dogs, no, no. No, no. So, Pat, what's, uh, do all bees sing? All bees sting except the queen. Okay. The queen doesn't sting. But if in conditions like this, once we go behind the bees and we're not in that flight pattern, generally they don't sting. So, so when is the best time to actually approach the bees here? Is it? Well, when it's above 10 degrees, normally we wait till 12. No wind and rain. Okay. Wind is actually as bad as rain. It drives them mad. Okay. Because I'm going to take the roof off their house. Yeah. And smoke them. So if I took the roof off your house and it started to rain, you wouldn't be too pleased with me. No, so really it's, it's similar. Okay, so okay. We're, we're going to get Sue and Boo here. Uh, he says the one sting or the do sting, so I ain't taking the risk here. I'm going to put the suit on. We're going to put the suit on here. So yeah, the five mil take the fisherman's gloves, so that if you did come across a bad episode with bees. Uh, you, we do get violent bees. Okay. We get violent queens and they would absolutely go bazooka on you. So they can't sting through these. They can only sting into them. So have we quiet bees here? We're very quiet bees. Ah, there you go. That's these, right. are, these are really good temperament. Well, that's that. That's that. Okay, so I'll just bring me bits around. Okay, well, you just explain, Pat. You see that the smoke coming out there? What's the, yeah, so the smoke idea? Is, so when I open up the box, yeah. the bees would come up, obviously. So I'll just open the side of the box, I'll give it a little smoke. This will be just waste wood. Yeah. Natural waste wood. They'll think the forest is going on fire. They'll gull up up a bit of food and they'll go straight down. Straight down into the hive? Yeah. And that'll buy me five to ten minutes on uh, walking with them. Okay. And that's all we aim to be today. We're not going to do a big. Okay. So I'm just going to open a nuke today, which is half a hive. Half a hive, okay. Because if I open the hive, there'll be too much to look at, and it's too much for people to remember. Okay. So I'll be just opening half a hive today, and it'll just show you the, and demonstrate the pollen and stuff that's coming in. Right. So you can see the different colours. So that'll be the different uh, flowers that they're getting. So we've what? We've about seven types of, of trees seven here. Seven types of trees in Ballarat and Wood, which is absolutely brilliant for the bees, because they're all the time uh, in different flowers. Okay. And obviously the ivy would be the very last one which comes in in September, which we actually hate because it just um, there's too much sugar in it. Okay. So that's the only one we don't like. But the rest is brilliant. So, so will there be different co color? There'll be different colors. You'll have from your um, from your beans. You'll have grey. You'll have oh. very dark grey. You'll have light brown. You'll have yellow. Will be. The most predominant colour. Okay. And then if there was chestnut come out, which would be later on, it'd be red. Okay. And I know there are charts, but with with them going to about 50 flowers per uh, visit, it's hard to know exactly what they're talking off. Okay. That's why there'd be multiple colours. Okay. But it's all the natural stuff that's around you. 
the most they would fly is three mile, but with 50 acres of wood here, they'd rarely go beyond the wood, because okay. they have enough to forage. And you see all around here is, there's no chemical, yeah. no nothing. Natural the wild grass, yeah. natural vegetation, that's what they, dandelion, anything simple like that. And you were saying that they would sense, uh, they can sense the weather, they, their, their smell sense, compared to us, the dog has what? Right, well, our sense, the dog has 100 times better smell than us, okay. or hunting, hunting, and the yeah. bees have 300 times better. Okay. So they would know the weather for two hours away. Okay. They'll know what's happening, and they will tell you. Because if, if you open the box, and a big boom comes, you know there's something wrong. Something wrong comes yeah. okay. So we do know a bit about that. Okay, well I hope to do any because I'm <laughs> trusting my life when I'm here and you can in here but uh, we'll walk back. Now, so we'll walk, we'll and these are the frames here. These, the are, these are the this frames. This is what we're going to look at. These are the frames that we put in. So they are wax frames. Yes. And they have wire down through them just to straighten them up. Yep. Some ones I would put in uh, half this size for the honey and I'll put no wire in them. Okay. So then we can just cut them out with a knife and eat them. And you could eat them, the natural goodness that's in them. You can eat them and then just spit out the wax. Okay. That's all that's in it is wax, pure so, wax. So honey is a natural, it's a natural yes, remedy absolutely. for, 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 so for any cures or for... Anybody with allergies, anything like that. Asthma uh, or... Yeah. Uh, sneezing bad in the summer, take a large spoon of honey at least once a day. And is preferably that, in the morning. And is that from your local area to say that it's, it's, it's yeah, very much... What you're breathing in, yes. you should hope that that's where the bees got that from. So it can counteract that. So from your naturally, your local environment is really where you should take your Absolutely, honey if you have any, yeah. if you have any there's ailments. No, there's nothing wrong with taking it from afar, but you don't know really what you're allergic to okay. or why you're sneezing. So the nearer you have it to your own fauna, the better it is for your own system. Okay. That's but, okay. Well, today well, actually, well, today we're going to bring the honey back and actually my mother is going to come out and test it because she yeah. would probably so we know may, a little bit more about it than we, may than not we have, would. We, we may not have uh, much in this because I opened them on Sunday, so I just left them short frame, so they might have built comb. I don't know if I opened yeah. them. Yeah, well, but it's only for demonstration it's purposes. Purely yeah. demonstration. And we, yeah. we can come again at another stage Absolutely. anyway. So, okay, you lead the way, I'll follow. Uh, Caleb is on the video here. I hope you've got gloves on, Caleb, have you? Okay, you're. you're, you're okay, you're. so we walk around the back. Okay, let's go, I'll okay. follow you. So that stand, I just fold it in two, put it in the back of the van, and put the bees in the yeah. box and drive to whatever field Paul tells me. Yeah, so Pat was saying there that we'd say as, as the, the, the different crops come into flower. Uh, into flower for pollinating, we can actually move these hives. So these are all very transportable. You can take them one by one, put them into the back of the van and bring them then to wherever, wherever we need to be. So yeah. we would have finished probably in the icy rape. The icy rape has gone about three weeks, three weeks now. The beans will be coming. The beans will be next. The beans will come to the flower. The potatoes will actually come to the flower as well. And, a bit of flower and on them. a bit of flower on them. So, so Pat can move them to wherever, wherever we'd say. Look, if he's going to be around, he'll probably know. We can tell him, but he'll probably know when they're coming into flower and we, and we can move the, the hives. To, and to then whatever pesticide is to be put on them, like spraying off the seed rape, then boys will tell me in advance and I can close it up. Yeah, so we, we, walk, we walk around it. It anyway. doesn't kill them, but it's just there uh, to help make sure that everything's okay. Okay, we're going to walk okay. back. You all right there on the camera? You coming a bit closer or are you afraid of us? No. I'm just looking. Okay, so we're, we're going to go over to this. Uh, what did this? A new box. Is it? Yeah. Okay. It looks like a big box, but it's only half the frames. Okay. Okay. So this is just opening up. How simple it is. Because it's a new box, I have a feeder on it. Can you zoom in there? Okay. So I fed these on Sunday, and they have it all drank. So I can just pour the syrup in from the outside with no gloves and walk away. And is that just to get them started on the... On yes, the that's for just building purposes. Building purposes, okay. Okay, so I'll take off the lid and then the bees will start coming out. You see, they're very passive. Yeah. Okay, so i just put that up so there. So here we see the bees here now, they're, they're sitting This here. is where I give them a little smoke, a tiny bit. Mm. And they're gone. They're not going down there, are they? Yeah. Now I'll open up this, and this is, guess what? Ah! Oh, look at this. Ah! This is super. 
I said I left off the frames on Sunday for them to build. Now, this is the pure comb. This is pure comb with honey in it. Okay? So I'm going to have to shake the bees off now. So they've, they have gone ahead of the... Yeah, yeah. Because I knew, we were, I knew we were coming to film, I didn't put in an extra frame. So they just built ahead of me with that syrup. Okay, so they're all flying around now, but don't worry. They'll just calm down now in a second when I give them their little... Okay, you just come out for Okay, so if you want to come in close with the camera, this is the first frame. Okay. So generally the first frame will be stores. So all them holes there are stores. And if you can really zoom in today, the queen is laying. Do you see these little white eggs? They're all new bees. There's some brood, which is really what I wanted to see. So I knew I know now that this nuke that my queen is laying. Because oh look at all the all the that she's laid since Sunday, look. How many, how many eggs did she lay in the day? Like? She's going now, she, she could lay up to 1,500 eggs. Okay. Not, not at the moment because she wouldn't have the facility, but she could be laying up to 1,000. And does, so does that as, depend on the, the next two week, Yeah, in the next two weeks, this will be full, and then I'll probably have a super on it, which is a, another half one, and she would definitely be laying up 1,500 to 2,000 eggs a day. Once the food supply is coming in, okay. and because we're here, it will. So, so here's, more, here's more of the brood. So the brighter the colour, the fresher it is. So you can see those little white pupa, we call it, and larvae. That's the new bees. And then they'll cap that like they did this. Okay. Right. And in 16 days, there'll be a new bee out. So how long, what's the life uh, cycle then of a bee, we'll say, Approximately from... Approximately uh, six to seven weeks. It's a short life. They actually walk themselves to death. That's sad. That's really sad to... Sad to say, but that's what they do. Okay, so this is just stores, they'll be just cleaning this up, that's all they'll be doing. There's the honey there, the white is the right. honey. So that's capped honey. So if it rains next week, they'll have something to fall back on. Yeah, so they themselves need the need, need food oh, source so that they're flying in and out. So all these bees, Pahar, these are all walking, fly, bees. walking flying bees? No, no, they're not all, all the lads that are coming into the front of it are walking bees. bees. These, some of these will be nursery bees, which are young bees. But they all have a, a job to so do. So what job would the nursery bees be doing then? Would uh, attending the queen is one, uh, and filling up as the nectar and that and pollen come in the front, they'll take it off the walking bees, and then they'll be sent to, to, uh, clean, or to clean, clean or or do whatever. So if you can zoom in on that, Caleb, you can see the honey in its raw. Yeah. Now that would be probably 60% uh, sugar at the moment. So they'll have to t extract the sugar out of it, and then they'll cap it. And they cap it like what we've seen on, like, the, on, like the, on the other on side there is capped. Yeah, that's yeah. capped. Yeah. Uh, this is really good because they have come on a lot since uh, Sunday. So that's your honeycomb then? Yeah. So what I want So we're after coming back now from the apiary here. We have the comb. Comb, honey in the comb here, yep. haven't we, Pat? Uh, my mother is here. She's going to taste it because she... Like... Uh, so, no, no, just hold it that way. You can see now. Your oh, fingers, yeah. we see the, the, the shine of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can that. eat that raw. That's what's meant to be. A lot, a lot of honey in it, isn't it? Mm. Oh yeah, that's uncapped. That's so what I would have been showing you then, some of it was uncapped and capped. So there'd be more sugar in that until they How extract does it. Taste? it. Beautiful, really lovely. Mm. So as as we said, like it is a natural cure, um, and and we really probably should take note of of. Uh, or maybe honey in, a, in our local area where we are. If we have any ailments like asthma or hay fever yeah. or anything like that, it's it's very good for, for any of these problems. So that uh, cut on my arm. First thing I do is I get a bit of that and just wipe it out. Right. Okay. So it's as natural as that. That's because years and years ago, that's what people done when honeys were when honeybees and that were very plentiful. Yes. You could put that. They used them in some countries for inside people's stomachs and that. Uh, they put some honey in and it stops infection. Okay. It's better than tablets. Very good. So that, that's how natural it is. Right, well look, we're going to wrap it up here. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the video there. Uh, it won't cost you anything. If you have any comments, leave them in the comments uh, box below. 
We'll try to get back to you, Pat. We'll, we'll actually get back.